All right, we're going to fast forward ahead a little bit in social studies just because there's really, this is the last day that we'll have social studies this year. So I want to make sure I cover some of the bigger concepts uh, that we had. We maybe take a week or two on some of these concepts um, if we were still in, in school. The first one is the end of the Revolutionary War. Uh, Tuesday's lesson was on the uh, first Fourth of July or on July 4th, 1776. The war went on for five years, and it looked bad at several points where it looked like our country, our, the American side was going to lose several times, but they kept hanging on. Eventually, one of the key things um, is France started helping us, and that kind of gave us a little boost, a few extra soldiers, and that was kind of a, an important factor in us uh, winning the war. So eventually, we won the war in uh, 1781, five years later. You know, right away after the war, then you get, you have these 13 colonies that are now states that all kind of want to do things their own way. So they passed the Articles of Confederation as their rules or whatever, and they were not very strong. They, they had all kinds of issues with them. So about five years later, they wrote the uh, Constitution. And the Constitution is what we still follow today, what our rule of government Everything about the Constitution, how our government works is based in the Constitution. Why the president's there for four years and then a re-election, it says so in the Constitution. All our, all our form of government is based on this document that was written in 1787. So it's quite remarkable. I'm just going to talk about a couple of the issues uh, with the Constitution. First of all, um, they, had, they are arguing the small states and the big states about representation in their uh, lawmaking body. The small states wanted every state to have two. The large states wanted it based on population. They're thinking, we have a million people, you have 100,000, we should have more say. Both of them are valid points. So sometimes you he we have two houses of Congress. The Senate, every single state gets two of them. Every single state gets two of them. Uh, in the House of Representatives, it's based on population. So small states only get one person, where a large state like California, population-wise, would probably get 50. So that was their first compromise. So now there's two separate houses of Congress. Another one was over the issue of slavery. Our country still had slavery at this time, and with the um, House of Representatives, the people in the South wanted the slaves to be counted as a full person. The pr people in the North did not want this. They're saying you don't treat them, you don't give them the freedoms, the rights and things, you shouldn't do that. So their compromise was that slavery would count as, uh, slaves would count as three-fifths of a person, which sounds ridiculous, but that's what they did at the Constitutional uh, Convention. Eventually, about 80-some years later, during the Civil War, slavery did end. Um, a couple of issues, again, they needed to get all 13 colonies to agree to this, or their states now, um, so they had to kind of, they were a little nervous about it, but they promised to add a Bill of Rights to this. And the Bill of Rights, uh, they wanted it, the, one of the big things, they didn't want the federal government to be too strong. So they passed these Bill of Rights right away. Um, and some of the, right, some of the uh, Bill of Rights that they passed were they're, they're doing called amendments, things that you add to the Constitution. The first one is the basic freedoms. So you have um, the freedom of speech. So in our country, you can say what you want um, and not get in trouble for that. You have the right to peacefully assemble, you know, get groups together and talk about things uh, legally. Uh, you have the uh, freedom of religion. You can go to whatever church you want or no church at all in our country. Some countries aren't like that. Um, you have uh, freedom of the press. A lot of these things really came into play with the stuff that's happening in Minneapolis in the last week. You know, a lot of times they, the people have the right to peacefully protest where they had issues a lot of times was with the people that would riot. The key word is peacefully there. Um, and people have the right to the uh, speech and things like that. Um, so a couple other things. The Second Amendment is one that you hear a lot of times in the gun debate. Remember when Paul Revere was coming around the countryside warning the British are coming, British are coming, that take your guns. So they passed the Second Amendment 
um, saying that the citizens have the right to have, uh, keep their guns. Uh, the Third Amendment is uh, no soldiers. Remember, in the, I think one Liberty Kids, the, they were just sitting in this place in Boston. The soldiers could come and live uh, right in your house, and you had to take care of them and feed them stuff. They didn't like that, so that was the third one. Uh, the Fourth Amendment, that has to do with search and seizure. So if the police uh, want to come into your house to look for something, they cannot do that legally without having a piece of paper called a search warrant. So they can't come search your house without your, you could let them come in and search your house, but unless they have a search warrant, they legally can't come in your house unless you give them permission, okay? The fifth, uh, fifth one is that in a court case, you do not have to testify against yourself. Um, a lot of times, um, if, so like if police are interviewing someone, they can choose not to answer. You hear a lot of times on TV shows and stuff when somebody gets arrested, they say, you have the right to remain silent. Anything you say may be used in a court of law. And all of that has to do with things in the Constitution. So again, you don't have to testify against yourself. I saw the thing, um, again, tying it back to that Minneapolis thing, they talked about the three other officers. They wanted to interview them about what happened um, in the George Lloyd case. And... Um, they, all three of them pleaded the fifth, so they chose not to answer because of, of that. Uh, the sixth one's a right to fair trial. Uh, some of the other amendments, I think we maybe have 28 amendments or 29, 27, 28, somewhere in, in that range over the last several hundred years, so it's, it doesn't change that often. Um, there were um, the women's voting rights were in the 1920s. That's a big one. There were, uh, in the 1920s and 30s, they made alcohol illegal in our country, and then about 10 years later, they made it illegal again. That was an example of one prohibition. Um, they changed the voting age from 21 to 18 in the late 60s. Um, what was happening, a lot of people were being drafted and going off to war, and they weren't, uh, at, they could do that at 18, and they couldn't vote till they were 21. So that's another example of amendment. It's a huge concept. So. Um, just get the, do the best you can with watching this and trying to understand as much as you can. But the Constitution is huge. It's our, our whole government is based on that. So um, enjoy the, the video today.